These documents were created on the Xerox Star 8010 Professional Workstation. They were created by professionals, not an art de arts department, not graphics professionals. My name is Daniel Lipke. I was part of the team that designed and implemented the Star Graphics facilities. The purpose of this presentation is to show the Star Graphics user interface. The Star Professional Workstation has a processor, a large bitmap screen that represents a desktop, there is a pointing device called a mouse. As the mouse is moved beside the keyboard, the cursor on the screen moves correspondingly. Two buttons on the mouse, called select and adjust, are used to make and adjust a selection. The star keyboard has three groups of function keys and a standard central part. The right functional group is not used for graphics editing, so we will ignore it. The upper function group is referred to as soft keys. When text is being edited, they have meanings shown on the key tops. For example, make the currently selected text look bold or italic. When graphics figures are being edited, they have other meanings that will be demonstrated shortly. The left function group contains the generic commands. Delete, copy, move, show properties, copy properties, and again. Their meanings are defined only in a generic sense. It is up to the currently selected element to further define them, as we will show shortly. This object on the desktop represents a document and is called a document icon. When I move the cursor over it and press one of the mouse buttons, it becomes selected and shows that it is selected by highlighting itself by doing a video reverse. I have just pressed the open key in the left functional group. This opens the document. This means we create a window and display the contents of the document through the window. This particular document happens to contain examples of the basic graphics transfer symbols. These symbols include points, lines, triangles, rectangles, text frames, and down here we have a graphics frame that contains the other basic graphics transfer symbol, the BART. The objects that are graphics show that they are selected by highlighting their control points. The control points for a, the control points for a point are one that are centered on the control point. The control points for a line are one at either end, for a triangle, one at each vertex, for rectangles, one at each corner and one at the midpoints, and for frames, they are like rectangles with their control points, but they also completely invert their interior to show the difference between them and rectangles. Text frames are used to label documents. You merely point at the text and start typing. This text frame is an expanding text frame. It gets large enough to show its entire content. As I will show later, it's possible to turn off this black border around the edge of the text frame. Notice that when I select this rectangle down here, that the rectangle has control points, but the control point closest to where I pointed at it is a little bit larger than the others. This is called the guiding point. This is used when I do move copy of the object. For example, if I press move in the left functional group, I can now move the rectangle and it's attached to the cursor by the guiding point. If I make a copy of this rectangle, the copy is attached to the cursor by the guiding point. If I hit delete, the rectangle goes away. All star objects have properties. The properties for this particular rectangle are shown on a property sheet. I have just a properties key in the left functional group. The properties for a rectangle include line width and structure for its outside border and its interior shading. The way you apply properties is to point at the property you desire and click with the mouse button. These properties across the top that are arranged something like a radio buttons indicate you have one of the choices but not more than one.
These are called choice parameters. The style is the same way, dotted, dashed, and double. Shading also is a choice parameter. Textures are different. You can have one or more of these textures. I can turn on the texture for vertical lines, the texture for horizontal lines simultaneously. If I press the apply button, the properties have been now applied to this object. I turn off the textures just as simply. Whenever a graphics object is selected, the soft keys at the top of the keyboard take on special meanings. These keys are shown at the top of the document by using a virtual keyboard. The keys that we will discuss for graphics are the stretch, magnify, grid, and line keys. So if we go back down and take a look at this rectangle that is now selected, I can press the stretch key. The upper left, the upper right hand corner becomes an X. That is the control point furthest away from the guiding point. When I now button down, the guiding point becomes attached to the cursor and I can now stretch the object. If I had used magnify instead of stretch, the horizontal and vertical ratio of this object would have been maintained. This gives us an overall scaling capability. Every graphics frame also has a grid. The grid can be turned on by selecting some object in the, in the frame and pressing the grid key. The grid now will control the placement of the guiding point as I move this object around. The grid can be turned off by pressing the grid key again. It acts as a toggle. All star graphics objects are created by copying an existing object, with the exception of the line. We provide an optimization by saying make line, which draws a line from the last click point of the mouse to the current cursor position. Lines also have properties. Properties of lines include width and structure, as well as optional arrowheads at either or both ends. Now that we have seen some of the basic graphics editing features, how do we go about getting that very first figure into a document? I have just opened a second document that will now appear in the lower portion of the screen. This document contains nothing but text at the present. After the word figure one, I wish to now insert a reference to a figure object. I use the keyboard, I use the keyboard key in the right functional group and insert a graphics reference. This appears as an anchor character. Looks something like a little boat anchor. Associated with this anchor character is this graphic frame. I'll now stretch this frame to make it a little bit wider and copy into it a line from the upper document. Now that I have this figure, I can go ahead and make it larger if I wish and complete whatever graphics editing I wish. This graphics anchor is a reference to this frame. If I select this span of text and this anchor character and press delete, both the text and the graphics object will disappear. I can just as easily move or copy a span of text and copy the seated anchor. Star can also help automate certain common data representation tasks. My name is Bob Weissman and I'd like to demonstrate Star's bar chart generation capability. A window on the top of the screen represents a copy of the basic graphics transfer sheet, which is a document supplied by Xerox, which comes with the system, which contains a copy of all the basic graphics objects in the system. We'll copy the bar chart from the transfer sheet down into this lower document, where we can then modify it. First thing we'll do is stretch it, make it bigger, fill the frame. Then we can alter the appearance of the bar chart by hitting the properties key to bring up the bar chart property sheet. We can make the bars farther apart, make them side by side instead of stacked and turn on the key, which is a legend which appears in the upper right-hand corner of the bar chart. we we'll hit Apply to start these properties working. We could have also, for instance, changed the appearance of the scale or the number of ticks displayed. The bar chart 
then reformats itself according to the new specifications. We can also use the property sheet to change the data displayed by the bar chart. Here we can also alter the appearance of the labels. Let's make these bold, for instance. And we can add another kind of fruit to the bar chart by adding a column to the table, typing in the name of the fruit, and entering the data. We could also add another year to the bar chart by adding a new row to the table. We'll type in the year. And the new data. When we select done, the bar chart reformats itself to add the new data, the row and the column, while still occupying the same amount of space on the screen and in the document. Star has other powerful interactive editing commands. My name is Steve Evans, and I will cover those operations that round out interactive editing. Objects in the graphics frame are layered. Frames, which are opaque, show this relationship. These two frames are partly overlapping. There's a command called top that changes the layering of an object. This command brings an object to the top of the layering order. If on top already, this command serves as a toggle and moves the object to the bottom of the layering order. It is possible to select and operate on multiple graphic objects at the same time. The adjust mouse button is used to make these extended selections. One way of adding more objects to the selection is to point and click with the adjust mouse button. This button is used to add and remove objects from the selection. You can also hold down the adjust button and draw through a large group of objects that you want to select. As feedback, a rectangle called a draw through box is shown. The extended selection can then be operated upon just like a single selection. I'll move and then stretch this extended selection. One can also bring up a property sheet for the extended selection and change the properties of all the objects. I'm changing the line weight and line style now. Sometimes it is convenient to have a collection of objects act as a single object. So we have a grouping operation called join that collects all the objects in an extended selection together into what we call a cluster. Now when any point on the cluster is selected, the whole cluster is selected. I'll split the cluster by using the join command as a toggle and show that it is indeed split by selecting the text frame. A bar chart is much like a cluster in that you can select it as a single object and split it into its component parts using the join toggle. Once broken up, you can easily edit the pieces. This capability is important because no easy to use automatic graph generation algorithm is always going to give you just the look that you want. Here I am changing the line style of the split bar chart by invoking the operation called same. This operation is used to copy properties from another object by pointing at an object that has the properties that you want.
When I am done, I then gather the pieces of the bar chart. It by selecting the text frame. The bar chart is much like a cluster in that you can select it as a single object and split it into its component parts using the join toggle. Once broken up, you can easily edit the pieces. This capability is important because no easy to use automatic graph generation algorithm is always going to give you just the look that you want. Here I am changing the line style of the split bar chart by invoking the operation called same. This operation is used to copy properties from another object by pointing at an object that has the properties that you want. When I am done, I then gather the pieces of the bar chart together by invoking the join command. Xerox Star 8010 Professional Workstation now makes it possible for office professionals to efficiently communicate their ideas using graphics.